Ryan Garcia allegedly tests positive for Osterine. And man, the tables continue to turn in this crazy world of boxing. I'm Paulie Malanaji. This is Paulie TV. So Ryan Garcia has allegedly tested positive for Osterine. Osterine is a muscle supplement illegal. Um, uh, VADA has, uh, was doing the testing. I didn't even know they were doing VADA testing with uh, Devin Haney and, and Ryan Garcia in their fight. Um, I've spoken to Margaret Goodman, president of VADA, when, uh, when I was still fighting. And uh, she had always told me that you know, her methods of, of detecting, of getting drug tests were effective. It just didn't have enough money to do it on a, a more regular basis. And she wished that there was more funding for this so that they could test these top fighters on a more regular basis and they would catch more of them. Um, she said that uh, the sanctioning bodies definitely have money for it, but they don't pay it because they, they themselves don't really care to catch anybody because, hey, man, the, the biggest winners, the more winners you got, the, the more people will be suckers to pay for them, you know, looking at them at, and turn them into heroes, you know. Um, I don't, you know, I used to really rail against this kind of stuff. I, I, it's not that I don't care. It's that I just, you know, I, I'm, I know I'm at the point where the drug testing is so weak and even by VADA standards, VADA is not weak drugs testing, but you need it on a regular basis in order to be effective. And VADA doesn't have the money to do that either. So I know most of these guys are on it. And that's why, you know, it's crazy because you can't really say anything about it because you risk getting sued. Because apparently, you know, it's uh, you can be sued for uh, defamation of character if you have no uh, quote unquote proof, even though it's a big proof to see what these guys accomplish, how they do it more so than what they accomplish. What they accomplish isn't is necessarily causing uh, somebody to... Uh, think somebody's guilty, but it's how they accomplish it. Um, changes in muscle uh, fibers, you can clearly see in some of these fighters as well, but not all the time. It's not all the time that it's that. Remember, James Tony was kind of fat at heavyweight and he tested positive for steroids. So it's not necessarily always that, but it does uh, uh, take effect as well. It does, uh, you know, can kind of you know, seeing guys moving up in weight and being continuously large for the weight class, even though they just moved up. Hint, hint, Brian Garcia and some other people, you know. Um, when you move up in weight, it doesn't mean you won't struggle to make the weight, but you typically won't struggle again. We're, unless, you know, we are not 15, 16 years old where you can, you're growing and you might jump up two weight classes, three weight classes in a year or two because your body's filling out and growing. When you're doing this stuff in your 20s, you're most likely on something, you know. Um, Ryan Garcia was a lightweight not that long ago. Devin Haney was a lightweight not that long ago. I'm not going to rail against uh, Ryan Garcia. I'm definitely disappointed. It doesn't shock me, though. Um, I remember first being... Um, suspicious of Ryan Garcia when he knocked out Romero Duno in one round a while back, actually. Um, Duno was a very um, durable guy. Um, Garcia hadn't shown that kind of punching power, especially one-punch power, to that point at that time in his career. And he barely hit the guy. He hit the guy with like a partial left hook, and you could tell Duno was, went out like because one leg went one way, one leg went another way. So like, you can't fake that kind of knockout. Like His leg went two different directions, and he went down hard, and, and he was over in one round. And I remember looking at that fight and thinking, hmm, that's weird, man. That's, that's that's a special kind of power. You don't just wake up with that kind of power. You know, you either had that or you haven't, and he hasn't had that, you know. Um, and, uh, you know, ever since then, he's been a, known as a hard puncher, you know, and so on and so forth. But, again, I'm not going to make a stink of it because, again, you have no uh, failed drug tests, so everybody rails against you anyway. You, know, you got a whole bunch of blowhard groupie fans anyway that rail against you no matter who you go after. You got guys that have failed out, right, like Ken Alvarez, and these fans still get made when you call them a drug cheat. So, I mean, imagine... Having guys who haven't failed, when even if it's obvious that they're on something, if they haven't failed, you really can't go after them, you know? Between the groupie fan base um, and uh, the fact that, like I said, you risk getting sued for defamation of character because there's no failed drug tests, you know? And it's very hard to explain this unless you've been in the gyms day in and day out and you can understand what a human body can and can't accomplish for the most part and to a degree, you know? Um, it's kind of disappointing, um, but... Because like I said, you you have a situation where probably most guys are doping, but and the testing is so weak that to get that means if you got caught, you were doing it like such a pig that it's like outright crazy. You know what I'm saying? Like because you can if you cycle right, you'll beat the testing protocol. You know, and 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 and, and got plenty of guys do it. Um, so and that's why I used to always rail against it. If anybody remembers 10, 15, maybe closer to 15 years ago, I was railing against it a lot because I was so disappointed in the injustices I was seeing, you know? And then as I started doing my due diligence, I started seeing, you know, that, 
you know, uh, the connections, guys that were my heroes, even before me had had to, uh, you know, drug, te drug, steroid labs and all this other stuff. Think guys that I won't even mention out loud, guys that you guys don't even know, you know, and I was like so disappointed because these were guys I had grown up looking up, looking up to as well. And then, of course, started looking into it in my own career. Um, as far as the opposition I, was, I possibly could have fought, I was fighting at a world-class level and I started to worry, you know. And I started to also feel like it was unjust because drug cheats are able to win more spectacularly and win more impressively and win more often. Um, and uh, they, they basically get all the dates and get the money that everybody else wishes they could get. But you won't be able to do it unless you yourself are a drug cheat, you know, which then compromises you in some way, shape or form. Seeing how far, how much is this really valuable to you? How much is this really worth it to you? I used to tell myself, I always dislike my opponents when I fight them because, listen, you're trying to hurt me, I'm trying to hurt you. But after the fight's over, I always have a good poor rapport on my opponents. And I would feel terrible if I, would, if I was to do some real damage to a guy that I was fighting and know in my mind that I cheated. You know, I see guys with their kids, I see guys with their wives. I would never want to live with that on my conscience. Before the fight, honestly, I'm trying to hurt you. But I know the way I would think after the fight. So if I would end up, ended up doping and hurting somebody, God forbid, you know, before the fight, you wouldn't really think about it. But after the fight, it would have absolutely killed me. So that's what the, was the main factor in, in, in me telling myself it's not that important that I accomplish more than what I'm accomplishing. I'm accomplishing enough. I can make a living. But I was obviously very disappointed. I'm just speaking from the heart here, guys. You know, some of you are going to take this as hating. And some of you are going to take this as, oh, well, Paulie wasn't good enough to reach that level. If I was doping, I would have probably had healthier hands because HGH would have made my, my, my bones more dense. Um, I would have had more power. I would have had more stamina. And I would have had the natural speed that I always had with those added, with those added abilities, you know. But again, it's... Uh, it's uh, just, again, I, I, for me personally, it just would have bothered my conscience um, later on if I would have hurt somebody. I didn't want to risk that. And I'm, I'm proud that, you know, I, I did what I did and I'm, and I'm you know, I, I can live okay afterwards, you know. Um, I feel like it makes me a better analyst because I had to really, really study the game of boxing, the, the sport, in depth in order to understand the tactics that I needed to use to win fights. And I feel like it made me a real student of the game. And I feel like it benefited me in some other ways, you know. Um, I guess it all balances out, so to speak. But um, going back to Ryan Garcia and Devin Haney, uh, this kid has shown a lot of power. Um, you're talking about a kid that who says he can't make weight at 140 when he just got there. Literally a year ago, he was fighting at 135. Yes, he was struggling. But now all of a sudden, he's going to go to 147. Osterine adds muscle mass. Um, he didn't make weight because of the added muscle mass. Um, it uh, recovers your muscles a lot faster, so you can have better stamina. Um, you know, uh, Ryan admittedly made like he wasn't training that hard um, and yet he had this power and his stamina stayed um, you know throughout the fight it doesn't look good like I said he was one of the guys and there are plenty I, and there are plenty that I was suspicious of um, plenty that I was suspicious of matter of fact I uh, Haney's association with uh, Victor Conti um, and Haney's the fact that Haney's you know um, looking so muscular going to 140 everybody makes like he was he was you know he had to breathe um it made me a little bit suspicious too but i never said anything because you know you don't know and haney's not a power puncher not that it necessarily will make always make you a stronger puncher but it uh i, I was thinking it you know i was thinking possibly it was it but again i i realized at this level especially in 2024 at this level i don't know that you i don't really know that guys can get to the top without um without uh, doping. I, I'm not sure. It's not my field anymore. I don't know how much dirtier it has gotten, but I assume it's only gotten worse um, because these, these, the entrance of these strength trainers who are so adept at this kind of stuff and they're so knowledgeable at this kind of stuff has come more and more into boxing that it, um, it probably added more, um, more of this kind of drugs into the system. And Honestly, if you're clean, how do you beat fighters who are doing this kind of stuff? It's not a how it's not it's not Hollywood. It's not a movie, guys. You know, in order to beat guys like this, you got to dope yourself. And in order to um, now you risk your life. You know, you're possibly risking your life going into fights cleanly, um, going into fights clean against dirty guys like this. You know, so it's um, in the very least, I feel like Ryan Garcia should uh, have the win taken off his record. I feel like there should be a no contest. You know. Um, like I said, I I was kind of suspicious of Haney too, but I don't have any right to say anything, you know? Um, it's my personal opinion. 
So I would say, oh, maybe they're probably both doping, whatever it is. But to get caught in a in a in a sport that tests so weakly that you gotta be really doing it like a pig to get caught. Um, Ryan Garcia got caught, man, and uh, that means he's like, you know, he's extra guilty, you know. Uh, if uh, if this test if this failed test stands, we'll see, you know. Um, but now the uh, ultra power that he's been showing. Uh, especially since the Romero Duno fight, which is the fight that I said to myself, wow, that doesn't look like the way he's been punching until now in his career. That is a big, big difference, you know? And um, I think now you uh, you have to at least um, have some suspicion. And I don't think it's going to matter. I mean, Canelo Alvarez failed the drug test. Um, Canelo Alvarez still, you know, is not tested all the time. Um, Went up many weight classes and was, you know, hurts guys full blown super middleweights when he himself was not a full blown super middleweight. You know, took the power of Gennady Golovkin, who, you know, was hurting everybody um, because let's face it, these things are also stimulants and and uh, can help your chin as well. Um, I don't know, man. I'm just I'm just thinking out loud, guys. I'm just giving you the reaction, thinking out loud. I don't know what you guys' thoughts are on this, um, but uh, I think in the very least, the if he's guilty, if if the if the B sample comes back positive as well. I think this fight should become a no contest. I think that's uh, that's uh, the least that should happen. And um, well, you Ryan Garcia fans are uh, a different uh, breed. You went after uh, the entire panel at Pro Box and, and all the media guys that had picked against Ryan. I mean, when it was pretty obvious why everybody was picking against Ryan. I mean, he was an eight to one underdog for a reason. But um, would have been a good story. But um, real life. Things are a little bit different, right? So, uh, I guess uh, that's it, man. We'll see how this unfolds. Maybe I'll do some more videos on this going forward. It, it, I don't think that it will completely overtake the media hype of Canelo Munguia this week because uh, we had a Canelo Munguia press conference this week and Oscar and Canelo almost came to blows and whatnot. I think that will remain at the top of the of the uh, boxing news. But uh, certainly a shock for a lot of people. Ryan Garcia fails the PED test in the, for the Demahaney fight for Osterin. Will they take away the win from the record of Ryan Garcia? Will they take away the loss from the record of Demahaney? I think that's the least that should happen if he's guilty. I'm Paulie Malanaji. This is Paulie TV. Mm -hmm.